Hello, my name is Abbasi. I am 57 years old, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I served 22 years in Marine Corps. I retired in 2000 from Marines and transitioned from that over into a civilian sector with AT&T. I work now for AT&T and have been for about 16 years, going on 17 years. I currently live in Dearborn Heights. Uh, been living there for about seven years and uh, kind of enjoying life. I've been a Muslim for 16 years, pretty much 17 years. Uh, I took my Shahada in uh, Okinawa, Japan, of all places. Uh, while I was, was on active duty, it was on my last year of active duty, transferred over to Okinawa, Japan, and uh, met up with some, uh, some pretty uh, pretty gung-ho military Muslims, and, and, and uh, we'll talk about that a little later in the interview. Life as a Muslim uh, is a far cry better than before I was a Muslim. Uh, I'm not one of those who can actually say that I was looking for a missing piece. Uh, I've always believed that uh, nothing happens except by God's permission. Uh, so whenever I was afflicted with something, I always, you know, look within first. Uh, because it only stands, for me, it's just logical. If you be punished for doing wrong, it's only logical. If you do good, you're going to be rewarded. And uh, it's up to Allah when he rewards and when he punishes. And I know that there were times when I had done something wrong and nothing happened. And I knew better. I knew I wasn't getting away with anything. So whenever I got afflicted, I didn't point the finger at somebody else and say, oh, it's your fault and this and that. I always said to myself, you're paying for something wrong you did uh, in the past. Uh, and so it was always, for me, it was kind of always there. Um, and not so much looking for a missing piece, but kind of, kind of that aha moment. The light bulb coming on going, ah, so that explains it. So that's kind of how it is for me now as a Muslim. Things just fall in place. Uh, they make more sense. Uh, the, the, there's, if it's this way, then that way. Not, you know, I don't understand or this or that. Kind of uh, lays things out and put things in perspective. Before Islam, life was uh, kind of, I don't know, helter-skelter, pretty much. Even though there was that, you know, that awareness, you know, about uh, the right and wrong of things, uh, there was still, you know, you see people around you doing things. I mean, we, I was, you know, born in Detroit. Uh, my father's side of the family was... Uh, religious, but they were drinkers, you know, alcohol drinkers. My mother's side uh, was uh, more of the, she had drinkers too, but, you know, they were kind of more civil. So I grew up kind of with the drinking and the driving and the partying and the clubbing, and, you know, it was uh, common to drink and drive, which, you know, for me was when I became uh, an adult, it was the first thing I did, hit the bottle. Uh, had a pretty illustrious 10-year drinking career. And uh, we would, you know, it's kind of like we, we go to church on, we hit the club on Friday and Saturday, go to church in the morning, you see the same people. Uh, and uh, a lot of, lot of uh, you know, hypocrisy, you know, people saying you know, on Sunday morning, lots of things being said, but, you know, Sunday, Friday, Saturday night, it's a whole different story. Uh, so there was a lot of ups and downs. There was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, shenanigans going on, so to speak, um, and so that was the way you know that's how life was, and and, and you kind of reach a point where it, you just become tired of it, and you want to you want to you want to settle into something uh, and have more consistency, uh, but if you're not on the right path, 
it's it's not going to come to fruition. Yeah, you're going to have some peace. And I had some peace. You know, I had long periods of peace, but then I also had long periods of, you know, afflictions. And, uh, and so that's the way it was. It was kind of the, it was the ups and downs, the roller coaster ride. Uh, that's how life was. And, and uh, if you don't, you know, if you're not guided, if you're not on the right path, then you think this is how it's supposed to be. Uh, but if you get guided and you get on the right path, then you'll find uh, life can be so much better. You know, I mentioned earlier about uh, not really missing, you know, looking for that missing piece or, or, or you know, the, the missing piece to the puzzle. Uh, how I came upon Islam, is, for me, is kind of interesting. I mean, we all got a story, but the bottom line is that uh, nothing happens except by God's permission. I think it was always there for me. Uh, at least the principles of, of Islam was always there. But uh, I actually learned about Islam, or started learning about Islam, through some guys that were with the quote-unquote nation of Islam. And uh, I was stationed in Hawaii, and being a, a Marine uh, back then, you know, racism was, was pretty, pretty prevalent. Uh, so the militancy of the nation of Islam appealed to me. Uh, so when I started hearing about it, I was actually talking and didn't even know about it. And then somebody got wind of it. And the guy said to me, another Marine, he said, man, I got somebody I want you to meet. He said, man, you sound just like him. So I met up with him and they talking my talk, you know. Uh, and so that's how I started. I started studying with them, but the nation of Islam won't allow a active duty member, military member, to be a member of the Nation of Islam because they figure you work for the devil's army. Uh, so so they won't allow you, but, but you can study with them all you want. Now, being one who was never raised on hatred, that part of it never stuck with me. And I've got a large family, 11 brothers and sisters and then six aunts and uncles that were raised with us. And for a long time, since my mother was having baby after baby, my father was the only one who worked. And plenty of white people helped him. Uh, so hating white people just did not settle with me. Uh, and when I first told my father about, you know, studying Islam and changing my name, he kind of he hit the roof. He went off. But then he settled down and he said, hey, you know, told my mother, he said, hey, we raised him. Did the best we could, you know. Because he's grown now; he's got his own family, and so on and so forth. Uh, so he said, "Hey, let him find his way. We're happy he's going further with religion." Uh, so I transferred back and to the states, and I kind of dropped off because, again, I'm in the military. You put your hand, life in his hand; he puts your his life in yours. White, black, blue, brown, purple. There's no room for racism, uh, which fit perfectly within my upbringing. It, it just was not there. However, what the nation teaches, when you read the Quran and you study, you'll see that's not what this says. So as you delve, delve deeper and you say, nah, that you know, color has nothing to do with it. Anyone can be a Muslim, uh, so on and so forth. And again, we all got a story, but as humans, that's all we're going to have because we don't know the unseen. Only Allah knows. He knows the rest of the story. Uh, so we've got stories, but the bottom line is we're Muslims because Allah says we're Muslims. We're not Muslims because Allah says we're not. Whoever is guided is guided. Whoever isn't, isn't. And that's all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that's how I became a Muslim. And when I transferred, when I retired and, and uh, transferred back here uh, and met up with some brothers who, who were on the, the dean, the Salafi dean, uh, and started speaking with them, it just, it all just fell into place. And, um, and, 
and I've been I've been a Muslim ever since. And it's exciting. I love it. I enjoy it. And I wish everybody could be a Muslim. If I could give uh, one suggestion, one piece of advice uh, to anyone who watches these videos uh, is to keep an open mind to not argue or reject truth. If it makes sense, investigate it. One, one thing that I tell my family members, because I'm the only Muslim in my family, uh, is I tell them, don't take my word for it. Don't take the preacher's word for it. Don't take the imam's word for it. Study, look into it, find out for yourself so that you can make a well-informed decision. Because the key is this. If it depends on whether or not you're going to spend eternity in the hellfire or in paradise, if I were you, I'd find out on my own. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, what's yours?